welcome back to XMLX. Today we're going to talk about patriarchal blessings, or as I've heard them called many times, Mormon horoscopes. I'm going to talk about what a patriarchal blessing is, and I'm going to talk about my own personal blessing, and I'm going to talk about how to get access to yours if you threw it away when you left the church, like I did. I got mine in 2010, so I would have been about 16. Most Mormons get theirs between like 14 and 18. So you go to your stake patriarch, who is usually just this old guy, always a man because men are the only one who hold the priesthood in Mormonism. And that guy is supposed to be qualified to give you a patriarchal blessing, which really is a lot like a horoscope. It's just um, kind of vague, generalized information about who you are and what you're going to do with your life. And um, most of the time they're very very vague so that, you know, if things don't happen, it's not weird <laughs> because these are the kinds of things that happen to most people in their lifetime. Um, then it talks about sometimes if you get lucky, it'll talk about your future spouse or it'll talk about the kids you're going to have, or it'll talk about the things you're going to do in the church. Every so often there will be one that has like exciting information in it. And Mormons would like to spread lots of rumors about this. I heard all kinds of rumors um, about patriarchal blessings. Um, but the thing about them is that you're really not supposed to talk about them when you're a member. You can talk about, about them, but you can't talk about what is in yours specifically. You're not supposed to share it with anybody except your immediate family. And it's supposed to be very sacred and they ask you not to share it. Um, I think a lot of that is because, um, they give patriarchs you know, certain ideas on things that they can talk about and say, and they kind of repeat the same stuff over and over. So if you compare them, you will see that they all say something extremely similar, and the church doesn't want people to think that they're all similar because they want it to seem like it's revelation for each specific person. When I left the church, I felt very upset and very angry about the whole thing, and I felt like I'd been lied to and betrayed. So a lot of the stuff that I had um, ended up in the garbage. In fact, almost everything I can think of that I had that was related to the church went in the trash bin. And then I watched the jump truck go by and pick it up and dump it all in. It was very cathartic. But then I realized that I wanted to talk about patriarchal blessings on my channel now that I talk about stuff like this on YouTube. So I needed to get a hold of it again. The church has a section on its website dedicated to this, requesting a patriarchal blessing. I will drop the link for that in the description so you can check it out if you you want to see your patriarchal blessing again. So you do not have to be a member of the church to get your patriarchal blessing. Um, I had my records removed in January, so I am no longer an official member of the church, but I was still able to get my blessing. What I did was I went on the church website and I couldn't remember my password. I had an account before, but I couldn't remember what it was, but I was able to go through their, you know, password recovery thing. I got my password, I logged in and went straight to the request your patriarchal blessing page and then it just asked me like a few questions about what stake I was in and if I could remember the name of my patriarch, which I couldn't. I could just remember the name of my stake. And then it told me it would take up to a month. So I wasn't expecting to get it back very fast. I actually got it less than 24 hours later. I got a notification saying that it was available. I went to the website and before it let me look at it, it actually had this little thing displayed and it was saying like, you've been asked to remind you that a patriarchal blessing is sacred and not to be shared and don't show anybody and don't spread it on social media and don't talk about it with people outside your immediate family. Which was funny because the whole purpose of me going and getting it was to share and talk about it. So anyway, I did get access to my blessing and um, printed it off. Yes, I did print it on colored paper because I couldn't find the white paper and this seemed kind of funny and sacrilegious anyway. For those of you who want to go get your patriarchal blessing, you can do the same thing I did. If you had a church account, it's going to be a lot easier for you because your membership record and your thing is already in there. I did actually talk to a few people who had encountered trouble with this, so I called um, Mormon Customer Service. Yes, it was very, very funny to me that they have a customer service line customers. It's a church. <laughs> but anyway, um, I called them the first time. They told me um, if you are not a member anymore, you can still have access to your patriarchal blessing. And you don't, they said at first, you don't need your membership record number. You don't need anything like that. You can just use an ID. I tried going through with another account to see if I could get it without an ID and it wasn't letting me. So I called back. And this time I was told that you do have to have your membership record number in order to request your patriarchal blessing. If you don't have it, 
you have to get it. And the only way you can get it, because they won't give it to you on the phone or anything like that, the only way you can get it is to go through your local leaders. Basically, you have to find out who your bishop is, talk to him, he can give you your membership record number, then you can use your membership record number to request your patriarchal blessing online. So if you don't have your record number, it's going to be a lot more annoying for you. And, you know, depending on what your relationship is with your bishop, it could be something you don't want to do. So if you want it bad enough, you definitely can get it. I mean, it depends on how much effort you want to go to, I guess. So the church had said that I should not share my blessing, but I am not going to listen to that, and I'm going to share my blessing with you anyway. Uh, I think there's some interesting stuff in it, and I want to see if you guys could draw any parallels with the blessing you got and the blessing I got and see how similar they are. I was really excited to get it because they talk up patriarchal blessings a lot, and it makes it seem like you're going to learn so much about yourself and you're going to, you know, you have this revelation and I was like, it's going to point me in my, the right direction for what I'm going to do with my life from now on. And so I got really excited and, um, you have to talk to your bishop and then they direct you to your patriarch. You have to set up an appointment, do all this stuff. And they have, or at least when I went and did it, they had like this piece of paper that was basically like your bishop giving you to say like, oh, you're able to get your patriarchal blessing and you take it with you to the patriarch's house. So I go um, to my patriarch's house and I get there and this other person is leaving as I get there. So he'd just barely done another blessing. And I realize I don't have the paper and I don't know where it is and he can't give me the blessing without it. So I'm like freaking out and I was so sad because I was so excited to get the blessing. And I go home and try to find it so that I can get back. And I don't remember if I found the paper or if my bishop called the patriarch and worked it all out. But anyway, we drive back there and I'm able to get my blessing that same day. And I remember I had been like almost, I think I was crying about it because I was like, I'm not going to be able to get my blessing and it's going to be the worst thing ever. Um, but anyway, we go and my patriarch basically tells me that he likes to sit down and talk to the people he blesses before he gives them the blessing and get to know them a little bit. And so we sit down in his living room, we talk for a few minutes. He's like, I just want you to be calm and happy so the spirit can be here. Um, and so we did that and then he starts to give me my blessing. So I've outlined a few things that I wanted to touch on. Um, one of the things he says at the very beginning is you were faithful in the presence of your heavenly father. And he says that a couple of times in here and it just made me feel good. Like I was, I was a good spirit up in heaven and I was really like, I don't know, it kind of like buoyed me up and made me feel good about myself. He goes on to talk about the lineage I was born from, and it's Ephraim, which I, probably like 95 to 99% of the people I've met are of that lineage, according to their patriarchal blessing. Um, this is just talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. They assign you a tribe that you're from when you get your patriarchal blessing. It's one of the things you like find out, and you're almost always the same one as your parents. And yeah. Everybody I know pretty much is Ephraim. By prophecy and revelation, Ephraim was given the responsibility to take the leadership of the gathering of the house of Israel in the latter days and to be a great moving force in the preparation and restoration of the gospel. You will be a part of that important work. So basically just telling me that I was going to do missionary work and bring people into the church, uh, which is interesting because I, you know, I did try really hard when I was a member to um, preach the gospel a lot and talk to my non-member friends about it and make the church like seem like in a really good light so that people would want to join. Um, it's funny how different that is now. Uh, I feel like I've talked to more people who I've helped lead out of the church than I brought into it at this point. I feel like I'm trying to do a good thing here. I bless you that you will be grateful for the challenges that you will have ahead of you. You were picked and chosen because you have the capacity and the potential to do great things. Heavenly Father will protect you. You will never be attempt tempted beyond your ability to withstand the temptations of Satan if you will stay close to the Spirit. It was during the time of my life where I was trying to be the most spiritual that all, all of this kind of came crashing down. Part of it also says, I bless you with the desire to live a clean and virtuous life. It kind of makes me laugh now because what the church deems as clean and virtuous as probably not really who I am. I try to be a good person, I try to do good things, and I try to help people, but I probably would be considered unclean and unvirtuous by the church. Some people, their, their patriarchal blessing doesn't talk about their future spouse, and um, I remember I was super excited when it talked about mine because all I wanted to know at 16 was who I was going to marry. 
It says, if you live worthy, you will find a wonderful companion. This is one of the most important decisions that you must make in this life. You must know for sure that you are making the right choice, and you can know this by the promptings of the Spirit. See, I, um, when I met my future husband, um, he seemed like a wonderful person. He was a great guy. He was kind. He was sweet. He had a lot in common with me, and we got along really well, and I fell in love with him super quickly. But um, I tried to read this and tell myself, like, yeah, yeah, like, I think the Spirit has prompted me that he's the right one, and I got this good feeling and stuff. And looking back on it, it's really just, I, I loved him, and I felt like he was the right one because I loved him, and I was having all these lovey-dovey feelings, and I felt the Spirit that was really just me being in love. At the right time in your life, you will be a mother. Heavenly Father wants you to bring choice spirits into your home, to teach them the gospel, and to raise them righteously to accomplish the purpose of their life. A lot of my blessing made me feel like the purpose of my life was just to be a mom. And as much as I love being a mother and I adore my kids, like, seriously, they're so cute, I feel like there's a lot more to me than that. And the whole purpose of my life isn't just to bring kids into the world. There's a lot more to me. This is a wonderful test for you. You were very successful in the presence of God, and now you have this opportunity to succeed here on earth. And it's funny because I, when I was in the church, you know, I would read this, say, wow, I was very successful in the presence of God, and that made me feel good about myself. And it says, you have the opportunity to succeed here on earth. And I would think, well, you know, am I succeeding? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? And I would try really hard to be doing what I was supposed to do. And yet I never felt like I was succeeding because I never quite felt good enough. I felt like, well, I'm not reading my scriptures enough and I'm not doing a good enough job raising my kids in the spirit and I'm not doing family home evenings regularly and I, I, I'm just not, not doing a good job. And I feel like I'm not succeeding. And now that I've left the church and I have, you know, the, the, those rigid expectations of myself are gone and I am more free to be who I want to be, I feel like I'm way more of a success now than I ever was when I was a member. My life is better and I make choices that make me more happy. This part always got to me. You have a very gentle and sweet spirit. It is very evident. It emanates from you and will influence your friends and the person you marry. He will see your goodness and would be grateful to have you as a companion. And again, I think um, this part of it was just something that when the patriarch met me and talked to me and saw how concerned I was when I didn't bring my paper, um, he just saw like who I was as a person. It wasn't any sort of revelation. It was just he got to sit down and talk to me for 10 to 15 minutes and get to know who I was. And at the time, I thought it was that he was receiving revelation about me and, you know, Heavenly Father was telling me, him this, but it was really just what he was picking up as a person. But it did make me feel good at the time and feel like I wanted to try my best to continue being that way. One of the responsibilities you have in coming to the earth at this time is to share the gospel with others and to be a good teacher and a successful leader in the church. I got to the teacher portion, but I never made it to the leader portion, so I guess I just stopped being righteous before I got there. I bless you with the desire to live worthy of the Spirit at all times. You will be able to make wise choices because you are prompted by the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father has blessed you with important talents. Many of them lie dormant, but you use them in your pre-earth life. Each talent has its purpose, and they will be important in raising your family and serving in the church. I bless you with the desire to prayerfully seek and develop them. When I got that blessing, I always sat and wondered, what is it that I was good at in heaven that now lies dormant? And I tried to figure it out, and I would try new things, and I never felt like I'd found the exact thing that um, was a talent of mine that I didn't have or I hadn't developed yet. I wonder how many other people have something similar to that, saying they have talents that they haven't tapped into yet. If you had something like that, leave a comment. I promise that if you will study the plan of Heavenly Father so that you understand the pure doctrines of the church, you will not be deceived by the evils of the world. I feel like I, I did try really hard to understand the plan of salvation, and there were a lot of questions I had about it. It was the kind of thing where I just see this and say the pure doctrines of the church. So I would kind of push away the questions, the things that didn't make sense to me, like the polygamy in heaven, and maybe did I have multiple mothers in heaven? Like how many heavenly mothers were there? Which one was mine? Um, was my husband going to take multiple wives when we got to heaven? And how was that all going to work out? I always wondered if Jesus died for everybody. Like, 
our God's God and his God's God and his God's God and all of those people that they were with was it Jesus had died for everyone or just the people that were on earth or was it all the other planets too and was Satan involved and all the other planets or was it just our planet and all of that stuff I kind of wondered about but it was the kind of thing where I just kind of put it on the shelf and thought you know we'll find that out later and it doesn't matter right now and I just need to concern myself with the basic pure doctrines and leave it at that and that's what I did and I guess now I wasn't doing a good enough job of it because I was deceived by the evils of the world I bless you that you will come forth in the morning of the first resurrection that's something that like everybody says and then it ends with these blessings are based upon your faithfulness in keeping the commandments so basically just saying if any of this doesn't come true it's because you weren't doing a good enough job but most of these blessings are relaxed enough that I feel like most people um, are going to see these happen in their life. Most people at some point are a leader or a teacher in the church. Most people, even if they serve, don't serve a mission, they still are going to be bringing people into the church through other means. Most people are going to get married and have children because the church promotes it. There's nothing in here that's particularly exciting or fantastic or different from the thing that most people get when they have their patriarchal blessings. So I want to hear from you guys about your patriarchal blessings. How similar was it to mine as far as verbiage and the things that it contains? And if you have anything like verbatim, I would love to know because I feel like the patriarchs probably do receive like a piece of paper that has, here's the kinds of things that Heavenly Father will reveal to you <laughs> while you're giving a blessing. That'll be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to follow me on other platforms, go on Twitter and Instagram and follow me at exmo underscore lex. If you have any suggestions for videos you want to see me cover, leave a comment or send me a message. I'm pretty good about responding on Instagram most of the time. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!